papá. Hey there, Jeremy here from veganinteractions.com. I'm super excited to share this video with you. Over the last week or so, in a collaboration with my sister Allison, we put together a video summarizing her rescue of five individuals who are chickens. Now fortunately I've had the opportunity to meet a few of them, and I can attest that they're absolutely awesome. I even had some conversations with them. You can feel your feet tightening up like you want to go. <coughs> <coughs> So regardless if you're vegan curious and you're not that sure about chickens, or if you're an animal advocate and can use these stories to help build respect for our fellow animals, in the next five minutes or so, hopefully this video helps us to see um, chickens as well as all animals as the unique individuals who they are. If you enjoy the video, please do like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe share it with someone who you think would benefit from getting to know chickens better. I hope you enjoy this incredible rescue story. I spent time on my grandparents' farm growing up and volunteered at a number of animal sanctuaries, meeting a few chickens here and there. But I'd always dreamed of taking care of chickens on my own, taking them in just as I've taken in cats and dogs over the years. Looking out into my little backyard, I could see where the chicken coop would go and I could visualize what their space was going to be like. My chance came in the winter of 2018. A factory farm in Colorado went bankrupt and left behind thousands of young chicks to slowly starve. A poultry farm in LaSalle goes bankrupt and leaves thousands of chickens behind. So an animal sanctuary in Erie stepped in. Rescuers went in and saved as many of the babies as they could. There was no way they could save all 36,000 chickens. As we were there rescuing, they were actually on the other side of the barn killing them. They didn't even have the means to go and send them to a slaughterhouse. In the end, they were able to bring back 529, many of them on the brink of death. This is actually our visitor center, but we took in so many birds, um, hundreds that we didn't have room for, so everything was cleared out. Fast forward, Opal, Rosebud, and Beatrice came home in December of that year. We were facing frigid cold at that time in Indiana. Hi, Opa. <laughs> so the girls spent their first several weeks under my care in a warm basement room. At night, I'd fall asleep to the sound of their cheeping floating up through the vents in the basement. It was like a dream come true. Spring came. Rosie, Beatrice, and Opal were growing up and we'd grown into a family. I learned that hens stretched their wings in a beautiful arc. They're so graceful, reaching out their leg on that side and often closing their eyes with glee at the same time. They dust bathe to stay clean and the joy as they're dust bathing feels palpable. They love vegetables, along with watermelon in the summertime. <laughs> when the girls came home, I had one dog, my Stella Luna. I didn't know how Lou would be with them, so we took it slow. Turns out Luna loves the chickens just as much as I do, often overseeing my feeding and cleaning efforts. Luna has become one of the girls' fiercest protectors. A little over a year later, we had the opportunity to take in two more chickens, this time rescued from the streets of Brooklyn, following Kaporos, a ritual where chickens are killed publicly. I drove several hours north to pick up Jane and Hattie. After being checked out by a veterinarian and a quarantine period, they confidently joined the flock. Our family grew and the girls continued to teach me each day, not only about chicken care, but about so much more. 
Even though I had rescued them, they have given me so much more. Don't tell my cats and dogs, but getting to know the girls has been in many ways more interesting than getting to know the felines and canines in our family. The girls start each day with so much gusto, bursting out of their coop with abandon. Even though they've been through so much, they don't look back. They are brave and curious. They form deep relationships, spending the entire day in contact with one another, either physically or through their constant chatter. All right, let's watch. Each of the girls has her own personality, her own likes and dislikes. Opal is always the first to say hello. She doesn't miss a trick, ever. <laughs> Rosie is the most vocal, the most passionate about food. Beatrice is quiet and unassuming. And Hattie greets me with a chirp. She always stays close by my side. And Jane, Jane we lost last month. She was the sweetest, regularly jumping up on my shoulder to get a better view of the world. And I know that she loved the surprised reaction I gave her every single time. Losing her was really, really difficult, no different than losing a cat or a dog. The girls love one another fiercely and they make their opinions known. They enjoy simple pleasures, a sunbeam, a pumpkin, their warm heater during cold winter nights. Amazingly, the only experience many humans have with these incredible birds is through our so-called food system. Humans meet chickens that are slaughtered at just 42 days of age, still cheeping as babies. When they're entrees, they're already gone, bodies on plates. At least 8 billion of these feeling, curious, funny, and sweet birds are killed each year in the United States alone. If more people could get to know chickens as individuals like I have, I'm confident we wouldn't be eating or using them. If you have a similar animal rescue story, email me at veganinteractions at gmail.com. I'd be happy to put together a similar video with you to highlight the individuals who you gave a second chance. Thanks for watching.